Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome back. We're very excited to be back with you today. I uh, got to tell you, I miss you all on the weekends. It's nice to take a break, but um, I miss being with you all. So welcome back. Um, today, we are going to get right into it. We're going to talk about topper tips. So you may wonder, what is an embroidery topper? Um, why would I need one? What are the different kinds? <laughs> Today, we're gonna to answer all of those questions. Um, Tamara Evans is here hiding in the background and I'm gonna introduce her to you guys. A lot of you know Tamara, you've taken events from her in the past. Um, she is a uh, font of knowledge and I'm sure you will enjoy uh, spending some time with Tamara as she teaches you all about toppers. That is a mouthful um, for sure. So let me bring up Tamara. Uh, Tamara, hello, welcome. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, Fantastic. Good. Let's let's learn all about toppers. All right. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, in your PJs with a cup of coffee, hopefully. Um, some of us had to shower today or felt the need to. Um, so anyway, it's a good day for me. Uh, let's talk about toppers. Toppers are things that we put on the top of our embroidery that uh, make our embroidery look better. So we all know probably about putting a topper on a knit so that your stitches don't sink down into the knit or anything with a nap or a pile. So if you've got your fabric here and you put a topper over, it keeps your stitches from sinking down into the fabric. Even that just minuscule layer there keeps it from when the needle is going down and pulling the stitches into your fabric, even on a woven, it keeps that a little bit more thread above the fabric so you see it and it looks better. So we're mostly familiar probably with water soluble toppers. And I've done a little uh, runner here and the same design, same fabric. Here is my monogram without a topper. And you can see it's a little bit jagged around the edges. Um, I hope you all can see that pretty well. I might take a picture and post it. Okay. I can see it. I'm hoping everybody else can, but I can see it. It's okay. Jagged. Good. Yep. It's a little jagged around the edge. Now, presto changeo, other side. This one I did with the topper. Yep. And you can see how the stitches are smoother. Um, they sink into the fabric in a more even way. Um, of course, I used a sharp needle with this, uh, which I always do when I'm sewing on wovens. It gives you a nice penetration. Um, through the fabric. So you get a nice even edge on that. Other places where you may think about using toppers where you probably don't or might not um, right now, on appliques, when it's doing the satin stitch around, it makes a much prettier satin stitch. Even uh, like on this linen, uh, monograms on napkins. Um, we know to use a topper on towels because it keeps it from sinking into the nap and uh, provides that barrier for us. But let's talk about some other types of toppers. Water soluble is probably the most familiar. That comes out the first time it's washed. So, which will do the job in something like this because it's just, uh, it will leave the stitches nice and soft and pretty and it goes away, which is fine. However, if we're doing something on, say, a heavy lofty towel, we may want something that's more permanent or on uh, fleece. We may want something to stay underneath there. So if you don't have great underlay or knock down stitches, it will help keep um, your the pokies from coming up through your design. So one place where I like to use a different topper, um, and I like to use this one on towels as well, but also on things that you can't wash. I have this little sweater here and I've done a monogram on the sweater. Now this is wool, so I'm not gonna wash the wool. I've used a topper here uh, that is called heat to go. Our water soluble topper, which I forgot to mention is stitch 2 Get it, H2O at the end, water soluble. Um, yeah, that's about all I learned in chemistry. Um, so the, uh, the other topper, the heat to go, has a little roughness on one side, 
Whereas the water soluble is smooth and clear and it feels the same on both sides. The heat to go has little dots on it, which make it makes it perforate very easily when you've stitched through it. And it doesn't go away in water. This will stay under your design for the life of uh, the article or garment or whatever. But it tears off very easy. I tape it down so that it doesn't flip up while I'm stitching. I do the same with my water soluble topper. Um, you can dampen it just a little bit. Um, I have given up the spit and stick method uh, because of the coronavirus. So um, I'll tape that one down now. So here's my topper. All I have to do is pull it away. It comes off very easy because the stitch is perforated tape out of there, tear it away, and it leaves a little bit in the inside. Now I could sit here and pick this out, which is not hard to do, and it is, you know, entertaining to a certain degree, but the other thing you can do with this is just take a hot iron, which this one is not right now, um, and touch it to the surface, and it disappears. It, it goes into stabilizer of la-la land. You need kind of a hot iron like a cotton setting and just touch it and that will go away where it doesn't go away is underneath the stitches so when this gets dry cleaned or if it was a towel and it got washed it stays under there as a permanent topper uh, which is very important to uh, it looking good through the life of the garment um, and with washing and wearing so here is uh, i did another one on the back so you can see here is the stitches after they've been Heat it away. Okay. Um, and you're good to go. So a little tip for you, if you're ever wanting to experiment on things, go to Goodwill or, you know, a, a thrift shop, buy fabric, you know, clothes. You can get clothes for a couple of bucks that, you know, are the fabric that you need. It's a great way to try out different things. So if you want to do a fancy monogram on a cable knit sweater and you're going, well, I don't know how that'll work. Go um, there and try it rather than ruining your garment. Oh, and my iron is hot now, so I can show you very quickly. Uh, hang on one second. I'm just going to touch this with the iron and see if I got it all. And ta-da, it's all done. How easy is that? Okay, so do we have any questions so far, Carrie? Um, it doesn't look like it. If anybody awesome. has any questions, throw them in the comments and I will let Tamara know. So for now, it looks like we are questionless. Well, let's move on. Then. So another thing that's been pretty popular of late to embroider on that is also not water soluble is burlap. These are our Easter designs here with the little eggs. This was a very inexpensive um, Walmart uh, placemat. I put fusible woven on the back and then uh, stuck it down. I didn't want to hoop this and risk getting hoop burn or moving the stitches. Then I put the heat to go over the top so it left a nice um, cover for the stitches and held them up above the burlap some. And then just use the hot iron to remove that and you get a really nice finish. Well, we have our first question, Tamara. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay, go ahead. So, um, when you're ironing the heat to go, is there are there settings? Do you use steam? Is it a dry iron or a hot iron or how does that yeah. work? Very, very good question. The instructions are on the back of the label on the package. Um, and it says to set it to like a cotton setting and it gives a temperature range. Um, although I have no idea what temperature mine is. I just set it on cotton. Um, so not the hottest setting, but hot. And then just touch it. It does not leave any residue on your iron. Um, if it balls up, you can brush it away, um, but it may mean your iron's not quite hot enough. Um, it should just eat it. Like so eat steam it or no steam? No, no steam. No steam. No steam. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. So those are the two basic toppers that we use, and I use them on almost everything I do um, because you just get such a nicer finish, especially if you've got a lot of satin stitching, 
stitches that don't have a lot of underlay under it um, to keep uh, the nap and pile down um, and provide a base for that, uh, for the stitches on top. It really allows you to see more stitches, which makes your embroidery prettier. There are some times, however, when even using a topper doesn't work very well. So here's my little polar bear. And that's cute. He's really sweet. But he doesn't look real white. So we have another product called Top Cover. And you'll see I've used him on this one here and see the big difference in the way it looks. It works a lot like heat to go except you don't put a hot iron to it. Um, it is a very fine film that comes in a package like this and it has sheets in it in three different colors, white, beige, and black. So when I'm stitching on a black towel and I'm doing a white design, I would use a piece of this white. And you see it's very thin. Just lay it down on top and it, oh, that's actually two sheets. Here's one sheet, maybe. So one sheet that's very thin, uh, just put it right down on top like you would a topper. You can tape it in place and then do your stitching and it will peel right off when you're done. Um, it works very well. So it was very easy on this bear. I just peeled it away and it's a permanent topper. Now it's going to stay under him for as long as I have the towel, I'll probably outlast the towel um, and keep it looking nice and the stitches pretty and white on the top. So if I was doing something, um, and you don't have to match exactly colors. If I'm doing navy blue stitching on something, I might use the black topper. But I've done another project that's kind of halfway done. It's been hooped and stitched. I'm doing our split letter monogram. And this is on a pre-made burlap um, banner. So I hooped poly mesh in beige because I didn't want to really see white through it and I couldn't, uh, it's a double layer. So I just wanted something on the back that would kind of blend in and not stand out. Then I basted it in my spray, stuck my banner down and then I basted it in the hoop. Then that showed me where I needed to put my top cover and you'll see it peels away very easily. I just pull it away from the stitches and so now under my stitches, I don't see any gaps and there's some pretty big satin stitches on here. Um, no gaps. I can get all this picked out of the center. See how easily it tears off. So this will make a nice door hanging. Can you hold more. that up a little bit more, oh, Tamara? You're just a little yeah. out of the screen. Sorry. And it just peels right off. This is your natural um, tearing pose, right? When you're at home by yourself, you hold this is things how up I in the air. I uh, have yeah. to the mirror usually uh, <laughs> because it looks just like my screen. Is it backwards on your screen? No. Nope. Oh, that's really weird. Um, so I just peel it off. And then you have a nice, pretty filled design. So, so it looks very thick and luscious without um, falling into the really nubby nap here. And there you go. So I'll just continue to pick that out. I have found in doing this one that a great way to get into these little sections, another use for your alligator clamps. I can grab that and peel it up and it works just great. But don't use a hot iron on this. This is not uh, designed to be ironed away. So any can questions? you iron that after you've teared it, torn it away? So if you were doing it on a garment, it can be, um, the heat is okay after the fact. Absolutely. It will not go away unless um, either this or this, the heat to go does not go away, even in a hot dryer. Um, the heat to go actually has to touch the iron for it to, to go away. And this, I'm sure it would melt, but I'm not sure it would melt properly, um, <laughs> might melt right into your fabric. Um, I haven't tried it, but uh, with an iron, so don't do that at home. Uh, but it will stay there. I can press this, um, you know, put it face down on my press cloth, press it, and it'll be just fine. 
Fantastic. Do you have any tips um, for, we didn't talk a whole lot about removing our uh, stitch 2O. I know it, it washes out, but do you have any it other does. tips? Yeah, I tear away everything I can from that. And then um, depending if it's a gift, which a lot of times we are doing gifts and mine tend to happen, um, they need to go from the embroidery machine directly into the gift bag because my husband's on the driveway honking the horn that it's time to go. Uh, so I will take a little Q-tip with some water. Sometimes I'll just, I've got a spray bottle of water by my ironing board. I'll just spritz it and get a towel and rub over it. And that goes away really easy. And so you don't have to wash it to get rid of it. Um, but it will come all out whenever it's laundered first time. Awesome. How about, here's our next question. What color of the um, permanent topping, would, the top cover, would you use for like a green thread or a yellow thread or one of those like in between colors? Well, you know, I might use the beige or the white, something to give it a different background and then stitch over it. Uh, it would give it, uh, it would take away that other color and then you could have a neutral color to, to stitch it on. So I would probably do something like that if it was a lighter color or, or depending what color I want to put on it. Fantastic. All right, that looks like our questions. Do you have any other topper tips for today? Um, just use it, use a <laughs> topper. It really, I, I would challenge all of you, it's just pennies. I mean, they're not expensive at all. It's probably the least expensive of our stabilizers, but it gives you the most bang for your buck. Um, although it's just pennies to use it. So try it and you'll, you'll find it works very well. That's a, a great tip. I think it's one of those things that you sometimes feel like you don't need. You know, you say, oh, I'm just in embroidering on a, you know, a tea towel. But right. um, uh, those of you who have taken our events, um, you know, we use it in our events to show you what a difference it makes, even on the most basic items. It just kind of makes your embroidery pop a little bit. It does. It really does because you've got more thread above the fabric so that you see more of it. Um, I mean, it may be minuscule, but it also improves how the stitches go into the fabric. If you're looking at a fabric that's a loose weave, um, even this linen uh, runner here, it's not a very loose weave at all, but you still get that jagged edge around there without the topper on it. If the topper was on that, it would, sorry, I can't hold it still, it would improve that jagged edge just like this. So if you're going to make, take the time and effort to make something, I strongly encourage you to use the topper. Um, and I haven't wet this one at all. I just um, tore it away and I can do a little Q-tip in those fine lines where I can't pick it out. Absolutely. And it'll all be on. Yeah, I mean, and, and I speak, you know, some of you know that I come from the commercial world. My 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 start in embroidery was in, in the commercial world where we would make things for, um, you know, logos on shirts and things. And we right. always use topper almost on everything. So if you can imagine a man's polo shirt, you know, a, a, mm -hmm. a, you know, with a with a grain to it, with a weave, you know, right. it, we would use that even in the commercial world to just make those stitches pop it just keeps things from sinking into the weave of your garment so a it great does. a great addition to your embroidery if you don't have it in your in your sewing room yet yes awesome well i'm going to show um some pictures of the things you use so thank you very okay. much tamara thank and you take care also you know i think this is a good point to talk about that you will be with us later on this week Yes, I've come out of my closet and I'm in the world now. Um, <laughs> so on um, Wednesday yes, and Thursday, um, Tamara will be um, Tamara will be with us talking about quilting in the hoop, which is an enormously popular topic. Um, everybody's been asking about quilting in the hoop, so um, that's that's what you'll be doing with us later in the week, right? Yes, I'm excited. It's one of my favorite things. Awesome. Well, we are excited to to check back with you on Wednesday. All right. So See thank you, all you very thank much. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. All right. So uh, thank you again to Tamara. And, uh, you know, I always learn so much talking to her. Um, here are some of the, the products that Tamara used today. So uh, Stitch 2O is the water-soluble 
topper. So um, it's got um, a textured finish. It tears away easily, and then you're going to remove the remnants by dabbing with water. So um, a great product for anything that you can launder um, that you, you know, and that that topping will dissolve with water. Um, and then we have our heat to go. So that is the heat removable topper. It's a permanent topper. So wherever the topper lives under your stitches, it will live there um, kind of forever. So it is great for things that you don't want to launder. Um, also, you know, you should keep in mind that it is it needs to be on a fabric that can tolerate an iron. So if it's something that you cannot iron on, not the best option uh, for that project. And then top cover is the um, product that Tamara talked about that um, adds uh, it, the, the white behind the polar, the polar bear. So it prevents show through on contrasting embroidery. Um, it comes in sheets and it comes in only three colors but they are uh, a, a good enough range for most things so black white and ivory and then really quickly the collections that tamra was showing in her projects so we have split letter monograms this one's great um you can it, i love this for wedding gifts you know uh, a couple's new last name you could say you know smith established 2020 or something fun like that. Nordic Holiday, there's our little polar bear. This is a collection from Amanda Murphy, who will be with us tomorrow. If you um, can join us at one o'clock tomorrow, Amanda Murphy, who is the designer from this collection, will be with us. And then Essential Monograms uh, is also a, a great one to be to have in your library. Um, has two sets of letters in it, kind of a planar script and a scriptier script so um both great options so thank you very much for joining us for today uh, on our topper embroidery topper tips um it, that was great information i always learned so much from tamra if you have any questions uh feel free to ask them in the comments still and we'll try and address them when she's back with us on wednesday talking about quilting in the hoop um, and as a reminder tomorrow uh, which is tuesday uh, um, amanda murphy will be with us uh, who is a fantastic uh, fabric designer pattern designer um, amazing quilter and she'll be talking to us about all of her different designs she has with us and where she gets her inspiration um, if you don't know amanda definitely tune in. She is fascinating to listen to um, and a wonderful person. So I know you will enjoy that. So thanks again for joining us. Happy stitching and we'll see you tomorrow.